we have a very exciting fireside chat coming your way brought to you by Thai West Coast on social fashion marketplace fueling sustainability and entrepreneurship. And we have Mr. Manish Chadda, CEO of Poshmark, in conversation with Ms. Shamini Dhana, founder and CEO of Peacecare. I'm going to request them to kindly take care. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shamani Dana, and I'm the founder and CEO of DSphere. Uh, with me today is my good friend Manish Chada, and we're both speaking, I gather, from uh, California. So I'd like to take this opportunity first to say thank you to the Thai Hyderabad community and organizers, the title sponsor, uh, the Adani Group, and all the Thai team across the globe and the entrepreneurship uh, spirit that has brought together both sustainability and entrepreneurial journey together. Today, I have with me the privilege and honor of introducing uh, Manish Chada, who is the founder and CEO of Poshmark, where he also serves on the company's board of directors. Manish is responsible for guiding the vision, strategy, and growth of the company. And he has applied over 20 years of experience building and scaling companies to create a social marketplace that combines the human connection of a physical shopping experience with the scale, reach, ease, and selection benefits of e-commerce. Prior to Poshmark, Manish co-founded Caboodle, which was acquired by Hearst Communication in 20, 2007 and before that, Manish has, sell, has held several executive positions, including Vasant, Vasata, and Sybase. He holds a MBA in marketing and finance from Haas Business School at the University of California, Berkeley, in MS in computer science from the University of Texas at Austin, and a Bachelor of Technology from the Indian Institute of Technology at Kanpur. Welcome, Manish. Thank you for having me, Shabani. Well, it's good to be together. It's been a long time. I think that I still remember about 20 years ago, we both were part of the Thai organization and we were actually organizing some of these global Thai events. So how interesting is that, that we're back again almost uh, two decades ago. But coming back to your background, uh, Manish, I'd like to touch on how you've actually sort of been through this roadmap and you're coming one full circle back in India now, addressing the people of India. And this year, as Poshmark went uh, public in 2021, um, you've also announced uh, the entree into India. So what was it like growing up in India, Manish, and you know, having no social marketplace and also having not the sort of like the smartphone that you can do everything now? Please share with us. Sure, it was actually quite joyful. Uh, I mean, I grew up in small towns in UP and then uh, spent some of my childhood in Delhi uh, with my grandfather in the bazaars of Chandni Chowk. So kind of got exposed to the real world social marketplaces where people used to haggle and talk to each other in real life. We got to go out. You know, I uh, one of the things that happened in my life was my father was a judge. So we changed towns every two to three years, which made my mindset very flexible and adaptable. And I think that has served as well as we live in this very rapidly changing world where if you go back 20 years, which is you know when you and I were first connecting, internet was sort of just being born in a way. And today we're talking about metaverses and virtual fashion. And mm -hmm. so, so in 20 years, the world has moved so fast. And I think it takes a certain level of adaptability. But what is really exciting is to see the Indian market uh, be very ready for a platform like Poshmark, which is focused on fashion, which is focused on people being able to take their wardrobes and bring them into the forefront, but also empowering people to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting segue into fueling sustainability with entrepreneurship. So we both come from the fashion world, uh, Manish, uh, I having 13 years in the sustainable fashion, ethical and now circular world. And um, this whole nuance of circular business model and sustainability is feeding into the mindsets of the Gen Z, as well as the conscious consumer. And, you know, in India, they've, whether they've used the word sustainability or circularity, it's interesting that the whole resale model 
um, has sort of like been embedded in their culture because people like to do peer to peer and, and actually go through resale uh, by passing down clothes uh, within a cultural context and also be able to just share uh, with their social circles. And so, you know, social commerce in India now is about, is, is projected to be 20 billion, right, in 2030. Um, and, you know, you're looking at a, a new kind of nuance where uh, the traditional way of doing uh, exchange is going to take a new level. Do you see this as being adopted in the Indian market? And, and, and maybe you can shed some light in, in terms of your perspective of um, how you feel, how Poshmark will add to the whole Indian scene. Yeah, so, you know, as Indians, we've always been about conservation. And if you go back to, you know, 30, 40, 50 years back, there was not a piece of material that was wasted. The newspapers that came in the house were used and recycled. Any piece of metal was recycled. If a car, you know, sort of was dismantled, every piece was uh, recycled. Clothes were passed on from household to household, from cousins to cousins. And in fact, uh, one of my advisors, whose mother uh, was part of the Mysore Bangalore diaspora, was talking about the fact that in the 30s uh, and, and 40s, there used to be sari walas who would go from villages in Mysore carrying heavy silk saris. And you could put a sari in, take a sari out and give a bakshish to the sari wala. But they, the saris that were package were packaged in these different baskets for different villages. So the same sari couldn't be born in the same villages. So it was, you know, it was in some ways, if you think right. about what's happening today is we're wearing beautiful outfits, then we are sharing them in social media. And then suddenly we don't want to wear the same outfit, but somebody else wants that outfit. So that's sort of one dimensionality of what's happening. The second dimensionality that's happening is as we look at an outfit, we want to have that outfit, we want to wear that outfit. And a social marketplace which really connects the closets of the world allows you to have immediate access. The third thing I think is a rising consciousness. The rising consciousness pertains to the fact that conservation is not just economically fruitful, it's actually a much more sustainable way of living. Uh, just to give you a sense that a single gene can consume as much as 7,000 plus gallons of water in the making of it. So once we make it, which is a very consumptive process, why not use it and use it and use it and use it, pass it on to someone who can use it, because these things hardly, hardly much, everything I'm wearing is from Poshmark, everything's sustainable, probably worn many times before it came to me, and then will get many times worn after me. So that whole circularity is, instead of being looked down upon or something as, you know, economically down, it's certainly become something that's being elevated. And you see this whole world of thrifters, people connecting their closets, people sort of recycling stuff uh, in a way that's beautifying it and, and, and elevating it. So to me, I think the future of shopping in many ways is a cross-section of social and sustainable, and they're heavily interlinked. They're not disconnected topics uh, in, in, in many ways. When we think about economic sustainability, we think about environmental sustainability, we think about social sustainability, they're deeply interconnected and tied to each other. And India, so many ways, is taking its rightful leadership position where we started it and now we are at the leadership of it. So it's exciting to see where uh, where India is and where India is going. Yeah, uh, that, those are important points you raise about the social aspect and uh, the economics aspect. You know, the fashion world, many people are unaware of the fact that 70% of the global textiles produced every year actually ends up in the landfill or in a incinerator. That's a $3 trillion industry. And the Ellen MacArthur Foundation actually has uh, used the figure $500 billion actually goes uh, untouched in terms of the economic value. And so what Poshmark is doing uh, with, with this resale uh, is very formidable. It's actually honorable. Um, and the stories that we can actually talk about uh, doing this resale and we're into the business of actually recreating those fashion pieces that combines resale and also just repurposing it into upcycled clothes. So this, this, this value add of you know, giving uh, both uh, the customer as well as the actual garment itself uh, a storyline uh, so that they can actually socially uh, engage 
is a huge, huge effort. And we've never seen so much being placed in the resale world until today. It's forecasted that the resale industry for the fashion world is projected to be $80 billion coming up by the 2025. And so um, I'd like to also turn your attention now to how Poshmark actually engages um, with your customers um, and provides uh, opportunity in terms of entrepreneurship. Because what you've done, Manish, and your team at Poshmark is absolutely remarkable. Here are people all over, you know, here in the United States, never ever having an opportunity to imagine themselves having a business and making not only thousands, but hundreds of thousands of dollars online in a social marketplace. Um, so, so, so share with us your secret sauce, like, you know, how did it start? You've been 10 years in the making and it sort of climbed all the way until now. So uh, do, do give us some insight here. Sure. You know, the Jelly Bosch Mark really started with us realizing that there is so much value trapped in everyone's closets and everyone's wardrobes. And the second thing is the speed with which fashion gets obsoleted. You know, sometimes from the time you buy it from the store to the time you come home, you may change your mind. Sometimes, you know, you may wear it once and then sort of obsolete it. So that leads to a lot of wastage. And at the same time, your uh, discard is somebody else's joy and treasure. And there's treasure buried in everything. So the, the second uh, part of Poshmark was, and it's sort of embedded in our core value, which is embrace your weirdness. By that, what we mean is that everyone is unique and everyone is to be cherished. So, you know, when you look at your wardrobe, you look at your closet, you may look at it and say, oh, I don't have anything of value. I don't have a Louis Vuitton. I don't have sort of an elevated designer item. But really, everything has value. And that's the beauty of Poshmark is everything gets elevated. This shirt may not be a designer shirt, but it's something that somebody else could value or I could value that. So that's the second premise. And the third thing was, if you buy into those two premises, then how do you make the whole process super simple, but also keep it fun? So for example, in Poshmark, we build features like a love note. When you successfully complete a transaction, the buyer leaves you a love note that displayed against your wall. And this wall of love is gives you sort of joy to look at that this is the joy I'm delivering to the world. You curate items, you curate items from your own closet, but you also curate items from other people's closets. And that mutual curation and mutual sharing helps build a community, but also helps me promote your closet, but also showcase your style and you can showcase my style. So we help each other grow as sellers, grow as shoppers and grow as a community. And when you put these principles together, it leads to some very, very uh, amazing statistics where our users are spending you know, 20, 25 minutes a day on the platform there. Last year alone, we did 30 billion social interactions on the platform. So it's a very deeply connected community. And it manifests not just in the online world, it manifests in the physical world. People uh, hold events together. They are getting together in real life. They are doing what we call passion sips, passion coffees. Of course, sub, uh, in the last year and a half, pandemic has taken its toll. But as pandemic is receding, we're starting to see people get together. Even as we're launching in Poshmark India, some of the communities getting together with masks, with safety precautions, and having you know time together, learning from each other, sharing each other. And that's how you build a confidence where you can be a single mother, you know, trying to raise your children and find an entrepreneurship journey on Poshmark. Or you could be a student using Poshmark to pay for your college. Or you could be a couple that both lost their jobs in a way and sort of really found a newfound profession in Poshmark. Or you could be a nurse supplementing your income. And each of these journeys ultimately take place where you could be an entrepreneur who's, you know, supplementing your income or really creating something which could be a six-figure, seven-figure business. And it happens not just because you have amazing sourcing, amazing talent, and amazing sort of social skills, but also the support of the community. So when we think of Washmar, think of it as a community which is really focused around elevating everyone's style and elevating everyone's business and supporting that journey, no matter what it takes. You could be, you know, we were just talking to someone the other day and she's 
Her goal is to sell her fashion from her closet, from her neighbors, and ultimately support this charity, which is around supporting abused women and sort of, uh, you know, helping them come out of their really bad situations. And that's sort of her main passion. And that's where her fashion journey goes. And then we've got an entrepreneur who's raising two kids and has created a multi-brand retail um, and resale platform on Poshmark. So all of these journeys are there and we expect many of these journeys will take place in India as Poshmark is in India. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. And so when you talk about these journeys of these um, posh part to posh parties and your customers, um, what are we talking about in terms of your uh, number of uh, items exchanged? Uh, is it in the thousands per customer? Uh, are we talking about hundreds of thousands? Give us some sort of like... Um, sure, yeah, no, every, every, that, uh, tens of millions of items, you know, uh, you know, and in, in, in really these are items that are going from one closet to the other. They're going from one wardrobe to the other. In so many ways, instead of going to landfill or getting burned, you know, and, and if you think about today, literally the stat is that every second about a truck full worth of apparel and clothing gets destroyed. So when you start to think of that level of destruction, this is conservation to the extreme. Once you've made it, let's transact it. And by the way, when a package in Poshmark arrives at your doorstep, when you open it, it's kind of like getting a gift. It's beautifully packaged, custom by your seller. There's a handwritten note oftentimes, sometimes they'll you know include some tips on how to style it. And so, that is a very different sort of shopping experience when you open up that box. It's really how shopping used to be. If you go back, you know, 50, 70, 80 years back, you'd walk into a neighborhood store and, and you know, somebody might say, hey, Shamini, uh, I know that you're looking for some outfit because I know you're going to a wedding for your friend because you'd already talked to the shopkeeper and she had so specific items for you. Or even if you go outside of fashion, you could walk into a store and, and the person might say, hey, I've got this specific hammer or nails for you because I know you're building, you know, a little furniture piece or whatever in your house. So each of these intimate connections, their personalization wasn't just about data. It was intimate knowledge between the seller and the buyer. And seller and buyer were not just selling and buying. They were part of a social ecosystem. In so many ways, what we are recreating in Poshmark is that beautiful sense of community where sellers and buyers are not just buying and selling from each other, but there's a sense of sort of human connection where, you know, you could be saying, hey, what, what size is the dress or sort of does it fall uh, on the knees or not? And you could also ask, hey, how's your daughter doing? I heard you, you were telling me yesterday that she was sick. So that kind of intimacy and connection, which has been lost, even in the real world, is in so many ways being recreated in online. And that's why we really believe that when we think of the social and community, it's the fabric that unites every activity and it more importantly unites shopping. And by empowering everyone to not just shop, but sell, you create a much more sustainable future. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'd like to take that same thread in terms of the customization. Um, we extend that with a D-sphere. So um, a little bit about this new beta launch coming out uh, in November that complements resale. Uh, D stands for digital fashion and the digital economy. And sphere, we basically say it's the symbolism of equality that we all share in the world today because we all wear clothes. And so in D-Sphere, what we realized in the world of circularity, that there are very different business models that are really perpetuating the value of clothing uh, from resale to repair to rental and recycle. But the repurposing part with the digital fashion, we have been able now and a proprietary tech platform, been able to launch uh, a platform so that the customers, you know, people of the world can actually take their creativity, their clothing and repurpose it, upcycle it and what we call it recreate fashion. Because you know what Manesh, every single one of us makes memories in a piece of clothing, right? If you really think about the life journey of a piece of clothing, you know, from your birthday to your grandmother's, uh, you know, uh, and grandfather's anniversary to graduation, um, you wear a piece of clothing that has a story to that. And if you really look at the various different mediums in the world of uh, connectivity, we've had sound, we've had film, we've had words, right, books, and um, we've had 
various different ways of putting it together. But we've never actually taken a look at how fashion, which we use every day, has also that storytelling mechanism. So this is what DSphere is about. It's a creative fashion platform that empowers people to use second life materials, which is actually your used clothing, so your materials that are actually sitting out there in rolls, and then also doing good in the world by bringing it all together because we have an environmental scorecard and we actually connect you to the garment workers. So what we're doing is an extension of what resale is about and your social marketplace. And I think these worlds are all converging together. Um, and so I'm excited that um, Poshmark now has even more stories to tell as you expand, you know, in Canada, Australia, and even now in India. Um, let's face it, let's ask this one question. How many of us actually has one piece of item in your closet today that you have a hard time leaving or, or getting rid of? Why? Because there's a human connection to it. Right. And so if you really look at it, if you put those threads together, you actually can make stories that are actually monumental and life changing. And what I recall this as, you know, timeless stories and memories and priceless moments. So in Poshmark, you know, as you move across the globe and you get into the cultural aspects of how people wear clothes and actually personify and manifest their dreams. I can imagine Poshmark actually telling a lot of stories. And so in these posh parties, Manish, what are we looking at in terms of um, how it might change in, in, in various different aspects of the world? Um, maybe you can talk about, um, you know, what you see as some of the parties actually that have been actually very successful. I think you, 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 you host some of these every night. Um, so, so give us a sort of flavor. Sure. So one of the one of the engines inside the Poshmark platform is uh, virtual Posh parties, and we created these back in 2011. And uh, they have themes, so they could be themes around fashion brands. So you could have theme around Nike, Lululemon, Athleisure, or they could be more around trends, you know, neon prints or wild animal prints, or you know, beautiful flowery prints, or what what have you, or evening wear formal wear, wedding wear, et cetera. And so each of these things then become uh, events that are live events that are happening. What happens in these events is we typically will have hosts. There'll be a group of people who will be hosting parties. They come from our posh ambassador community. These are people who've you know, sold stuff, delivered good quality, supported the community and have achieved certain metrics to be elevated to a posh ambassador. They're typically uh, the people hosting the parties. Anybody is welcome to attend the party. If you are, if you own a closet or a wardrobe on Poshmark, you can share your items to the party. But then there are rooms within the party. So, for example, there's a room where hosts are curating and picking the things. So, this is obviously an elevated room where you could have a few hundred items shared and picked by the host. And those are elevated. They obviously get a lot more exposure and marketing, but it also gives a sense for hosts to showcase the best of the best for that particular theme on parties. And they're not just choosing items from their closet. They're typically choosing items from, you know, dozens of closets. Each host will go out, scan, take nominations. So they spend a fair bit of time. And uh, today in, in U.S., which is a more scaled up market for us, we do four of these events a day. The evening party is, you know, the largest. It has the least amount of restrictions uh, in terms of what you can add to it. It typically uh, pertains to trends and themes. And nowadays, you know, some of these parties get almost 6 million items added to them in an evening, uh, which obviously is overwhelming. So one of the things that we do is personalize it for you. So as you shop it, it'll get somewhat personalized. But when you attend a live party, you'll see the inventory really evolving multiple times a second. Forget about every second. So it's a very fast moving, fast elevating thing. You'll see hosts adding the picks. You'll see people coming in, shopping. Uh, and these events have been... Uh, a way in, in, in some ways is kind of like a real world party. The real world party, you're obviously connecting with people you know, but you're also discovering people you don't know. And then you build those relationships and you shop their closets forever. So it's sort of bringing this real world interaction into virtual interaction. And what's interesting is that this is an artifact that was built into Poshmark in 2011. 
and has sort of been there and evolving uh, for the last 10 years or so. And where we see it going, you know, over time is adding video to it, adding live video to it and stuff like that. So it becomes even more interactive. Uh, we have video on the platform today where you can add short stories. You can share a story about a clothing, add it to your closet. But as these parties evolve and this whole area evolves, this is another point where video can go hand in hand with sort of text and mobile uh, to connect mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, and then the other thing which is interesting about these parties is because they're happening on your phone, you could be busy doing whatever. You could be, you know, putting your kids to bed or you could be out there walking or you could be at another physical party. You could still attend the virtual parties. And we've had stories of people attending virtual parties while they're attending physical parties, which is quite a meta concept in a way. Excellent. And I, I think you also have the opportunity to spur more entrepreneurship with your grants, right? You've actually... Um, uh, provided uh, sort of financial backing or and you want to touch on that because that actually really is spurring entrepreneurship with sustainability um, and, and embedded in that whole uh, journey. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our goal is to continue to invest in our community, uh, invest in our seller community, and invest in people who are beginning their journey. And one of the programs that we crafted uh, late last year as we were uh, looking at going public and sort of figuring out how to give back some of the, uh, the, 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 the pieces, uh, this was uh, a way to do it both monetarily. So we created a heart and hustle fund, uh, which is done in four cycles. So every quarter there's a cycle, a uh, total value of the fund for, for 2020. One is $500,000, it's given in $125,000 uh, chunks and our sellers are invited to participate in it and they're given different values of the grant. There's $500 grants, there are $5,000 grants. And these are given to really help elevate their business and take it to the next level. Besides the money, we also provide a lot of support. We provide entrepreneurship, we provide mentoring, we provide coaching, we provide inspirations. And it becomes actually a mini community within Poshmark where people are connected and taking their business to the next level. And yeah. there's, you know, obviously it's a competitive process. Many of our sellers apply to the, to the process. But what's, what's interesting is that in so many ways, the virtue of each of these interactions is really positive because if you think of Poshmark, when I buy an item from you, not only am I getting an item, you it's it's providing economic value to your uh, business, but then I can go ahead and resell that item. And as I do that, it creates economic value for me and, and, and propagates it forward. So this beauty of chain effect and sort of really paid forward is very much part of the Poshmark mantra and heart and hustle fund in so many ways represents that and represents uh, the name came from the heart and hustle that our community brings to the table every day as they build their businesses, as they sell their closet and they connect with each other. Yeah, now, I love that. I love that because uh, it goes with the, the hearts and the hands of behind our clothing as well. Um, you so well summed up uh, your message uh, in various different ways about what Poshmark gives to the world and how you simplify serve, share, scale, sustainability, Manish. So kudos to you, you're propelling jobs, you're propelling a whole entire universe of entrepreneurs that never once ever thought that social marketplace, not just fashion, but now everything else has the ability to change lives, transform community, and hopefully you know, extend the good in the world. So I thank you. Uh, any last words, Manish? Um, well, no, thank you for having me, Chamani, and I wish uh, a very sustainable future for, for everyone out there. And I think uh, what's exciting is that we are all joining hands and creating, you know, what we feel is a much healthier planet as we look into the future. You know, we need to leave it for our children, our grandchildren, and for many generations to come. So thank you for having me. Thank you for your journey and sharing a bit about your journey, Shamini, and, and all the best to everyone. Well, thank you, Manesh. I want to thank again the whole Thai Hyderabad team as well as Thai Global. Uh, it's been a, it's a great pleasure uh, and I wish the organizers and the audience uh, a sustainable future. Thank you.